Back in the day, if I stopped working for a little bit in my business, my business would stop working. When I saw that, I realized that I was over involved in my business. Everything relied on me. And after reading a lot of books, watching a lot of videos, I came to the realization that the issue was that I was over involved in the delivery of the service. And as business owners, we need to get out of the service delivery as soon as possible, because then we will have the time to really grow the business, to work on the strategy, to work on growth, to work on marketing, things that actually move the business forward. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I have done it. And there's only one thing necessary for being able to do that, which is a system. And in this video, that is exactly what I'm going to show you. I'm gonna show you under the hood, the system that me and my company, Systemify, use to fulfill all of our clients. And you will see how that allows me to step out of the delivery. But before we get into the system, what is the thing that we are really trying to fix? We're trying to fix five things. The first one, it is the chaos that is inside of our company. This means that everything relies on us and all the knowledge is inside of our heads. So if we grow, we are going to increase the chaos inside of the organization and that is not sustainable. The second one, it is the time drain. What I mean by this is that most of the tasks that we were doing manually could have been automated, but weren't because I didn't have the time to do so. The third one is the fear of delegation because when you don't have the right systems and the right documentation, I don't know about you, but I was a little bit afraid of delegating something because I was afraid that they were gonna do it much worse than what I was doing. Number four is the inefficiency. Since I didn't have any documentation whatsoever, I was also afraid that by hiring someone, that someone would be interrupting me all the time asking me questions. So that prevented me from doing it. And the reason is I didn't have SOPs. And finally, and probably most important, is the financial loss. A company that works unstructured and inefficient without automations, without systems, is losing money every month. Maybe you are not seeing it because what you are losing is the capacity of earning more money. So let's say that you are at 10K per month and you are overwhelmed without systems. But if you put systems in place, everybody becomes more efficient, you receive less questions from your people, you may be able to earn 20K per month. So you are actually losing 10K a month due to those inefficiencies. So these are the five things that we're gonna try to fix with the system that I'm going to show you and that is the one that we use in my company. So when I started building this system, I had these four things in mind. The system should be repeatable. This means that the process that we are gonna build inside of the system is always the same, always follows the same steps because if not, it is gonna be impossible to create a system around it because every time we will be doing things in a different way. The next thing that we want from the system is that it is automated. The least amount of human intervention that the system needs, the better, because the less that we are gonna become the bottleneck of it. I know some clients that before working with me, they were the ones all the time telling their employees what to do next. And once they finish what they were doing, again, the business owner, okay, now you have to do this next and every time the same. So they became the bottleneck of their own process. The third thing that we look for is that the system is documented. Documenting how things are done is the crucial step. So your company is dependent on the system and not dependent on you. Because when you're gonna hire people, they're gonna come and they're gonna go. And what we want to prevent is the training time that it takes to onboard every new hire, plus the questions that they're gonna ask you once they've been hired. And that is fixed by the right documentation. And finally, that the system is scalable. This is with the objective that with more growth doesn't come more chaos. So the system is ready for whatever scale your system is gonna get in the future. Cool, so then with this in mind, let's get into the system and how it works. This is the system, that is it. It is as simple as this, but there is a long thought process to make things as simple as this. But here, what we have done is first we have defined which is the process that all of our clients go through. And for doing that, we have standardized how we provide services to clients. This is the main objective. And it took me more than four years to really standardize my service to this level. So if you're just starting, it is completely fine that your service is not standardized. It is impossible. You don't have enough data to do so. 
But once you start doing your service over and over, you will find out which are the things that make the more sense, which are the things that don't really provide much value, so you stop doing them. And with a little bit of time and with more experience, you will get to the level where your process is always the same. This is the actual process that we follow. You see that we have separated everything by weeks and even by days. So once the client pays, everybody knows what they need to do by when until the very end of the process in week 12. And by the way, we are constantly iterating on all of this because we try it, we find ways to improve it, and then we improve it. So once we get this, what we did was to separate everything into different statuses. The way that I think about statuses is that whenever we want a new set of tasks being created, I want a new status. Because here in Notion Automations, we can create all the different tasks at every different status. Well, I, I can show you one, one example. I have created this project over here, Daniel's system, and here is all the information, like the development dates, support dates, the whimsical, because for every client, we create a map like this one before we get started. So the whimsical will be here, the sales calls, so the developer can have the information once he starts developing, the progress, this is the tasks progress, I'm gonna show you in a little bit. And now who is the team, who is the strategist, and who is developing the, the project. The idea here is that whoever is developing the project is gonna receive all the development related tasks, and the strategist is gonna receive all the strategy dependent relevant tasks. So how does it work? Whenever we drag this into the next status, we're going to see how multiple tasks are created. All these tasks are being created right now, and we can see them in this view over here, all the pending tasks. And what is good about this is that the tasks that need an SOP are going to have the SOP next to it. So now imagine that the developer comes here, sees this task, oh, duplicate the agency OS template, blah, blah, and he doesn't know how to do it. He will come to the SOP, and there you go. Here, he will be able to see how to do it. Another feature that this system has is it tells me, as the manager, how many days there are left for completing all the tasks in this status. We have defined that for the kickoff, we can do all these tasks in one day. So. Once we do them all, we will see here that the percentage is 100%. So then we will move this to the next status and the next set of tasks is gonna be created. So now if we go to the pending tasks, well, the same set of tasks assigned to the developer and with the SOPs that explain how to do the tasks. Now this system has another thing. Since we have standardized so well, when we do what, we can also automatically create the client timeline when each phase should start. So since this project kicked off on April 4th, which is today, the whole timeline just got created and it tells me when each thing should happen or should start. Like this, I can know from a bird's eye view whether the project is on time or not. Because here, when, we're, when we are building these kind of systems, we have to think of two different roles, the one that is executing on the system, who is doing the things, who is delivering the service, and on the managers, so they, managers or, or the founder, so they can see where their projects are standing, whether they are late, how much they are late, if they are, etc. Because one of the things that we try to minimize is the amount of communication between founders and the service delivery guys, because if the system can tell us the information, then we don't need to use anybody's time inside of the company. And then the process is completely the same every time. Just complete the tasks, move it to the next status, and a new set of tasks are gonna be created. Here there is only one task, and here is the SOP, and so on and so forth. So as you can see, like technically, this is not very hard to build. It is basically one database with a status property and with multiple automations that creates all the tasks. Here, the main job to do is to actually define this process over here. When we do each thing, in which order, 
who does what, because this is going to tell us everything. This is going to tell us which SOPs we need because we have uncovered all the tasks. So we're going to have one SOP per task. We are going to uncover which are the different statuses. Here we, we have it in, in red, which are going to be the statuses inside of the system. This is the actual hard part. Standardize your service and turn it into something like this. But once this is done, then it is actually quite simple to build. And now the last thing that I want to show you is if I go to my personal dashboard, here I have the view of the active clients that I have right now. And I have this little text that tells me whether they are on the right status or if they are late. So just by looking at this and by looking at the percentage of the tasks completed, I can see whether I have to talk to the developer because he's being late or not. So I'm going to leave you in the description of this video some ways that you can connect with us just in case you're at the point in which you want to start systemizing your service-based business. Hope you enjoy seeing how we do things in Systemify under the hood. And as always, hasta la próxima.